All right. Uh, we're live. OBS crashed when I was trying to switch away here a minute ago. I was trying to figure out uh, what we're going to do a recycler hollow, and I forgot where I left off on the, the numbering. But like I was mentioning, well, I guess you didn't see that part. I don't know. But um, I found one of the ones that I had done just the last. So, oh, yeah. Okay, I think I found both. So one of them was my first uh, ortholinear keyboard. Guess what it is? It's kind of a joke. Or it is a joke. It's a cherry point of sale system. Actually, I can't wait to make this thing work, but it's it's new and it was like 29 bucks. I don't know, from Amazon. It just sounded like interesting, so I oh, got one. So as you can see, that one was 28. Or, um, and then I have an Apple, this Apple Pro keyboard that I took apart in the last, another video, and that's 29. So I'm pretty sure we're on 30 but there's one other one that was a delphi that i got it said delphi i can't remember the i need to i didn't write delphi on the outside of the box so then now i can't find it because i can't remember who the oem was um yeah that's annoying oh there it is no, actually i do see it let me check the number on it sure enough that one was 30. So that's where we're at. We're on number 31. So let's do keyboard, uh, let's do recycler hall, shall we? This is the crappiest, and how many do I have here? Four, two of which are the same. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Uh, do I have a switch puller handy is one thing. Yes, I do. So this is a Dell Quiet Key. Uh, what is it? It's PS2, and let's just take off a key cap. And, you know, it looks similar to NMB Rubber Dome, I guess, to me. Uh, yeah. What did I mark the NMB ones over there with? It's the kind you'd see in some of the newer apples. Yeah, NMB Doma slider is what I think this is, but we will take a closer look. Um, and we're going to try to use my, uh, let's try, let's, let's, let's see if we can, well, what's interesting about this, let's just look at the front first. So it's, I mean, it's medium weight. It's not as light and crappy as some rubber domes, but it's heading that way. So it's probably because of the, years range it was in that it was getting towards super crappy um and the keycaps are not double shot they're light and wimpy and hollow uh it says del quiet key and let's look at uh, let's zoom in on this in case we can't get it later with the uh microscope and what do we got on the back here? We got, come on, okay. Keyboard model RT7D5JTW, made in Thailand. Uh, no other distinguishing features on it. It's got the channel, three, three places you can exit the cable. The layout. Okay, I guess. Um, all right, let's try the microscope uh, for the first time. Uh, whoops. Basically, what happened was, if there's a little glitch here, I'm getting you're trying to get used to OBS. If I move my mouse to the lower left corner, 
uh, my screen lock kicks in and when I do that OBS crashes so since I'm new to this I'm trying to figure it out and so when I unlocked my screen I just started OBS and started streaming again so I think it just buffered uh, rebuffered and kept, is keeping the same stream going so I'm gonna go with it it uh, looks like it is okay so let me go back to OBS and we we're trying to switch to the uh, microscope so Here's the microscope. It's not quite zoomed in clear. I mean, it, you can focus. That's all you can do with it. So let's put the key cap under it. Here's, here's the G key from this uh, Dell quiet key. And here's the uh, underside of it. So you can kind of read writing and let's see. What's that say? I C D B B four. Nothing really. I don't know what that means, but maybe. Um, so yeah, that's what the keycap looks like. I don't know if I can get the entire keyboard under there in a way that would be useful for what we're trying to do here. But there's the uh, there's one of the there's the keycap I removed. I guess I could start removing keycaps closer to the edge of the keyboard so I can put them under here when I need to. Let's see if I. All right. Anyways, let's switch back to uh, overhead. That's the boring uh, Dell Quiet Key with I believe. I didn't look it up yet, but uh, in fact, why don't we do that? I, I was thinking about trying. Yes, it's a slower approach, but we could, uh, you know, look up FCC IDs and stuff. So. Let me flip over to the Mac window and flip over to a new tab and try FCC ID. I forgot to look if I can find it on here. Let's see. Where is the FCC ID? Shocking. I'm actually not seeing it at the moment. Well, since I'm not seeing that, let's try Desk Authority Wiki. Uh, .net slash wiki. And see if we can search for this model. Dell Quiet D. Let's, see, let's just do that before we do the models. Here's some page titles that match. It's a series of rubber dome by Silitech or NMB. So that's what makes me think it's NMB because I've seen it before on the Apple M2980s. So that's enough for me. I believe it. Uh, let's switch back to, I need to get a dual monitor thing, but instead that's why you're going to see me switching around and stuff. But okay, so let's, let's just label this and uh, move, on our, move on our way. A long cord, man. It's like I don't know. Let's see, six foot cord, I guess. Uh, where's my label? Okay. So I had saved the labels in a file folder. So let's see if I can open the label first. No. Uh, so there's a maxi switch down. Cherry MX black. Yeah, crossover. So we'll use that one. And we'll put 31 at the end. Oops. Looks like I'm going to move the cursor down the row here. 31. And print. But I'm on the fatty paper, so that's not what I wanted. Yeah. So let me switch. Uh, I use the three. Three, uh, three eighths inch. Is that what this is? No, three quarter inch for outside of my the boxes that hold the keyboards. And I use the smaller one to place the sticker on the on the keyboard itself. Yeah, this one is uh, three eighths inch. And I might have to adjust the font. Um, three eighths inch. Okay. And font 20, sure. Okay, print. So 
so here's our label. I don't know if it's useful or not, but Voden's the one that does labeling, and he has, I guess, Japanese buyers that want to be able to refer to the which keyboard they're talking about when he's talking to them, and so this is his way of tracking it down, I guess. Um, all right, so we'll move on from that. Actually, I want to label the one that Will's on. Uh, can I review that keyboard? You want me to do it now or in five minutes? I need to do it like the one I just got. I mean, you can do the crappy one, but let me show people the crappy one. Here's a crappy one that my son was using that uh, is your classic modern cheap and light uh, biggest whole lever with a big stem for, you know, rubber dome, membrane, crap. Everything about it is crap. Uh, this is what there are thousands and thousands of these that I see all the time. Um, just let me borrow a pretty quick set. You know, uh, so my son's going to give me that. I forgot about it, but the other keyboard find it. It's actually my first uh, modern, nice, decent keyboard at a recycler. Like, so, um, I, I was next to a Razer Black Widow, and the Black Widow was cheap and plasticky compared to this one. This is a mono price. Well, we'll get to it more as we look at it, but it's actually a pretty nice thing. Uh, and I think I paid five bucks. So it's got LED uh, Cherry MX Reds. It's got double shot. Kind of looks weird. Though. Oh, because they're translucent. So. The double shot is translucent, so the light can show through the letters. Uh, let's get let's get on the bottom row and get it under the microscope and try to use that more, I guess, for fun. So uh, let me switch to microscope real quick for that part. So here's the here's a picture of the. Okay. Did you check the garage? That's the Cherry MX Red, and here's the keycap. This is the Z key, and it looks like that underneath. It's kind of translucent plastic. Z slope for the Z key. And let's switch back to overhead. Yeah. I mean, compared to the modern crap, it's got sturdy, so it has a, I think it must have metal plate in it. It feels solid. I can't, I'd love to look inside at some point. Uh, so we will see if my son doesn't mind. I'll label this one uh, 32. Let me put this on there. Maybe it won't bother him too much. And we didn't uh, look at it close enough, so... Here's the front, it says mono price. Uh, it's got some interesting stuff up here. Yeah, it's got a built-in USB. It's got interesting stuff hanging out of it. My son tried this with the headset, his headset and it had a, a whine or a noise to it. Maybe that's why the person turned this in. Cause, so he's just plugging his headset directly into his uh, tower case because it didn't work in this one so and then here's the probably the model numbers and whatnot so let's see if we can monoprice backlit macro mechanical keyboard gaming keyboard what i guess in the modern ones they don't have to put fcc id anymore is that what's going on sorry about the blinky but uh it's an mp gbl9 monoprice gaming backlit nine ninth version i don't know i like guessing at acronyms or normal numbers uh, oh yeah so we we're gonna label this one real quick as 32. you know I, it was definitely worth five bucks i can tell you that so, you know if i if 
if I didn't, I can raid the Cherry Max Reds, or they're worth more than five bucks, I would think. Or, yeah, maybe just use it as is, clean it up, get it less not being so dirty. And, uh, yeah, okay. There we go. Uh, now what? Let's get it out. Should we do the two? Yeah. So here's the ones I have two of. And uh, I gotta say, I, I used to use some of this kind of stuff back in the day. I'm a child of growing up on you know the oldest IBM personal computers and the Amigas, and then I used a lot of Sun Microsystems, and I never did have Silicon Graphics, but you know I always admired the what they what those machines did and uh, I think this is actually quite attractive keyboard um, and it's it's got a granite kind of it's got specs in it in the case uh, it's it's got granite colored like basically these are gray and this is a darker gray so it's just got a nice aesthetic to it the logo is obviously another thing I'm attracted to it's it's hefty so yeah this is a nice quality build key, built keyboard uh, I, I think the switches are not desirable so that's the downside of this keyboard but let's keep looking it over a little bit it's pretty grimy or filthy that whoever turned them in they turned in two of them so let's see what we got for uh, model number is the uh, RT six B five six T and uh there's the fcc id so we could let's we might play with that to see what the dates are and stuff uh let's let's take a keycap off though i'm kind of curious what i forget what it was but it was something booty yeah it's again it's horrible it's got a, a slider that's built into the keycap and it's just pushing down on the membrane so or a rubber dome so horrible from that perspective, but I'll get to why I'm interested in these later. Uh, well, I don't have to say later. Okay, so like I said, one idea what I had was obviously that other people have is to retrobrate the cases and brighten them up. And another one is to maybe color them with Cerakote. This case I love, these keycaps I love, but I won't be able to use the keycaps unfortunately. But um, another thought I had is to take the quality construction of these things and make PCBs with Cherry MX in them, or Alps for that matter, that would maybe fit the plate that's in here. And basically, if I can get that shape, I, I might be able to bring new life and have this cool case and logo and all that with a modern, some modern guts with the PCB inside it. So that's where I'm headed. I don't know anything yet, but I'll tell you what I do know is as we, I'm, I'm gonna do some teardowns at the end of this to, uh, along those lines, like to see what the plate's like and how the PCB mounted to it and start down this path of what I'm, what I think I, I want to do with, with that angle of things. Um, so let's look up FCC ID. Uh, let's see, I'm going to switch to Mac window and then I have to, I don't have, I only have one monitor, so I'm going to flip over to here and see if I can search in here. FCC ID AQ6 6 dash Cypress Z15 search. Oh. NMB Technology Corporation keyboard Cypress Z15 uh is let's see if we see anything interesting yeah so well let's say the fcc id is was filed in 1993 so that's cool i think it gives us a date and uh, i think the quality like i think it can go by the weight through the years and the rubber doneness uh but basically the weight gets lighter and lighter as we go through time um yeah so 
yeah, like this is the way it suggests it's from that era, is what I would say. Let's see, I'll get the other one out that's also the same anime. Appear to be USB 2, I mean a PS2. This one's also a trophy. But, you know, here they are, side by side. This one's definitely dirtier. No, not really, they're both grungy and dirty. Uh, they both basically are saying the same thing here. Yeah, same models, pretty much same everything. And, you know, it came from an environment where, I, I find this often actually on keyboard recycling that it's like companies are getting rid of their old stuff, so it's often a few of the same thing. So you can bet that a lab was using two of these SGs and they finally shut them down and and uh, recycle them. And, uh, okay, oh, I forgot. So we got a label. These bad boys. So I'm gonna put, uh, what, what's the last thing I did? Uh, 32, so we're on 33. 33. And 34. Uh, it's a very attractive color of granite that they have um or at least i like it i can't tell if it's yellowed you know like if it's bromine was in it and it's a darker shade of slate than it originally was so i don't know that's kind of one of the nice parts of having two is that you could i could experiment i could retrograde one and see if it looks any different than the other one i'll probably do that as an experiment why not uh, only retrograded once so far. It's kind of a hassle to set up. It's hard. It's hard to have enough space to keep a permanent environment with, with that thing set up. But eventually, I'll find if I get a two or three things I need to retrograde, I'll fire it up in the station and do it again. If you recall from my other videos, I uh, I took some stole the latest ideas and an idea from another guy that does micro pc or computer history in england or whatever the man cave or something like that the cave or anyways so i ended up with the same thing i got a roasting pan with a grow lamp over it and a sous vide keeping the water warm so basically the combination of heat and light and uv spectrum causes the retrograding to happen very fast. Like I did it for, I don't know, two hours last time and it was way too long or something. So I need to shorten it to maybe 30 minutes and see if it's done. But uh, so it will be fun when I do that again to see how, just how quickly the combination of the heat and the light finish the job. But, all right, there's our two silicon graphics. And the last one we have for recycler haul is this bad boy. I guess it's um, the cable is attached with a tie wrap, and I don't really have clippers handy to snip it. But um, looks like PS2. It's kind of a funky, uh, funky uh, connector. I've never really seen that. It takes a 90 degree bend to right here. So, uh, Kind of bizarre. And then why would you need a flap here? I don't know what that means, but I don't know. It's a compact. It's got some LED windows that are interesting. When I take these keycaps, it's like an octothorpe shape in there. I don't know why, but we'll look at that. I'll show you what I mean. It's got some green keys on the alt. And up here, Sysrex. So this is yeah, possibly triple shot. We'll see when we. Uh, oh, this is this little nav cluster is interesting, cute, non-standard, no Windows case. This is older, right? It's very flat and square. It's just super flat. So I guess the profiles are also flat. Let's see. Um, it's pretty shallow. Everything about it. Oh, it kind of like reminds me of the auto parts store would do this. So if, if it was, this would be. Kind of the cleanest thing for the auto parts store, I would say. Uh, so hidden under here is just not much, but 
I don't know what the heck this thing is. But that's all we get for uh, model number or something, or skews. Or very interesting. It's pretty, oh, there's some. Oh, here it is. It's actually right here. So, Compact Computer Corporation Series 2714 KB System Desk Pro, System Pro. I don't know. Let's see if the uh, microscope would have done been any better at this shedding light on this part. It's upside down, of course. But 2714 KB. Series 2714 KB. Let's switch over to uh, let's switch over to see if we can find anything about that on desk that I need. Two seven I'll look again, but uh, oops, I gotta switch windows. Two seven one four oops. Seven one four KB. See if we get a hit. Nope. How about Compaq? Let's just find our way down from Compaq. See if we can get lucky. Like System Pro and some of the other words. What? Compaq is a stub? Are you kidding me? Keyboards uh, by brand. Where's your Compaq? Oops, that was an accident. Here we go. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the stuff I see on Bowdens like this, but I doubt it. Let's see what this cherry. Eh, no, those have what? Oh, compact enhanced. That is not what we're dealing with either. Have I taken a keycap off yet? No. Oh, here's that 90 degree thing though. But yeah, it's not this keyboard. We know that. Series. Uh, well, let's go outside of that. Let's say Compact 2714 KV. Vintage Compact PS2. Some Ebays. Uh, let's, we didn't look at the. Fix the uh, switches yet. So we're not finding much, as you can see, but uh, let's take a closer look at it for ourselves. All right. Oh wow. So this is a funky. This is a double shot, but I swear it's not the same size as Cherry MX. That is the weirdest thing I've, I've seen. This is an interesting switch type. It'd be fun to see what that maps out to. And then let's get one of these LED one of these uh, LED windows out and see what. Uh, you can see these are like have start they jack you know each line extends out. I'll, I'll look at this in the microscope too. In the, the microscope too. So yeah, let's switch over to the microscope and see what we can see. There's your LED window. Let's flip it over. See what I mean by the octothorpe? It's interesting. Let's look at the let's look at a green key and see. Let's look at this print screen Cicero key because it's got a couple colors, right? Tri triple. So let's see if it's triple shot. Uh oh. No, oh, I'm be careful how I take it out. Okay. Oh yeah, triple shot. So. There's your triple shotness, black and black and green and gray. Cheap. Um, do I have a Cherry MX switch handy? Uh, well, we know they're not Cherry MX, so it's just a fact by the type of switch that you can see. So let's get that switch under here and see what if we can. Not funky. 
kind of swastika like but still got the plus sign the plus sign smaller than the than the cherry max in my opinion that's why i wanted to put something next to it uh, i think we got our cherry max oh i got stuff here we can do it so for one we'll look at the we'll look at this down compared to some other cherry mix down yeah. oh it's reverse that's why oh it pushes in where the normal one the cherry mix and duh so let's see so this thing is on the left and the cherry mix is on the right yeah but size wise you can i think tell that it's also smaller okay And for grins, uh, I might be able to do the the uh, comparison of the actual uh, switch down, the switch part, the switch housing part. And if I can find the where was that? I just had this here. It's it's not gonna it's not worth showing. So let me what I thought was gonna be cool was not. So let me get out of that. I'll switch back to uh, overhead. Yeah, interesting. I'll do more research and then we'll understand more about what this switch type is. I'm not sure. If, I haven't seen it, but I bet it's documented. If I throw it out on best already, someone will definitely know what it is. If I can get these back on here, there's one. This is interesting because uh, it's unique. I haven't seen this before. It's pretty, let's see, very strong tactile bump initially, way at the top. It's shallow on the travel. Shallow keyboard though, so very interesting. Okay, label time, and let's see, Pack from the old days. This is just an empty mark. Interesting. Oh, so I got the markers between the four, eight, and twelve. Yeah, very interesting. Okay, and uh, that's it for the recycler hall portion. What I wanted to do now was uh, talk a little bit about what I was thinking about for what I'm trying to learn and where I'm headed. So let me flip over to the web window. And uh, I started watching like these KiCad videos and I liked this series. It's an introduction to KiCad. It's like seven or eight parts. It talks about that app and how you make uh, parts, you know, I forget now I should know the names, but I haven't done it yet, but it was just my first pass through to try to learn it. Um, basically make the things you need to, to at the end of this pipeline you generate you can send a send a schematic to or whatever the output is to a pcb manufacturer and they'll make you you can buy a quantity of one two or three parts and i don't know we'll see if the price is prohibitive but i don't know it's probably i think it was like three of them for 30 bucks or i'm hoping something like that and uh then you know, this is generic. You can make any PCB with anything in it. And uh, 
whereas I care about keyboard PCBs. And so that's where uh, I stumble, or I should give credit of where I saw this. I might be able to do that. Uh, no. Uh, the board, the guy on the board did it a year ago or something, and he talked about how to make keycaps and do group buys and <clears throat> or how to design them and stuff, but I'm less interested in that. But then he started at the end talked about this, and so this is what I was looking for. This is keyboard PCB guide. So again, it's 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 a uh, it's using KiCad, and he here's the key part. We're gonna need libraries, and so we, Hasu made a keyboard parts component library and footprint library. These are the two things you need. And then this other user, uh, Techie, uh, has a, a switch footprint library as well. And so this is an example of kind of how you do it. He's going to do an example of <clears throat> a four part or a four, four switch macro pad or something. And so he's generating this stuff. I'm trying to scroll down so you can get to some of the pictures. Yeah. So this is kind of what we're talking about where these are the footprints of where the switches would go. And then it needs some other pieces, other hardware, you know, like this is where your controller is going to go. And he, they used an Atmel 32 something or other, or their Atmega 32 U4. So, um, that's, you know, I want to, I want to, these are the pieces parts. I'm going to use theirs. And then I'm imagining that at the end of this, I can make, I want to generate a PCB, two of them, one that's Alps and one that's Cherry MX because those are more widely available and, and desired for a PCB that can hold those type of switches. One, two PCBs, one, one for Cherry MX and one for Alps that fit uh, 30 year old keyboard types like you know what's your favorite layout and keyboard that's sturdy and so I think we can make a library of those PCBs and then just you just submit them to a PCB and then boom you're off to the races making it because you have an old keyboard in your hand and so pardon me for one second I have to take this hello Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yep. But. All right, so I'm a technician coming to do something in this room, so I'll probably have to end this. I should probably end it now and maybe recover this area and talk about it again later. But but for now, let's uh, end this with uh, overhead. Like, where's my Delphi in here? So one example is I took apart this... Uh, Apple Pro keyboard, and I've already forgotten what the insides look like. So here's the outer case. Here is sort of the top part that covered the membrane area. And here's a, I guess, yeah, this is steel right here. So this is my point. Like, I want a PCB that fits this layout that puts Cherry MX switches in it. So. The you know I would I want to line up the where the stuff goes to fit this layout and then you know here's this this has a slight curve to it so I don't know how so membranes obviously work well with the curve so one question I have is can uh, what do you do with PCBs for that can you even do it so the curved ones maybe they're off the table I don't know I have to read about it or ask someone I guess I gotta get more immersed in the community for how this is gonna happen but but this is where I'm headed so because my point is Apple designed an attractive case sturdy parts metal plate let's put Cherry MX or, or uh, you know Alps in it and run with it so take these old rubber domes, get rid of their rubber domeness, but keep the outer case quality and do something with it. So I have one other example that I want to show you that was attractive to me. Uh, it's my the Delphi, or it's the, uh, yeah, the Delphi board. So this is, uh, this is the Delphi board. It's, you know, currently five pinned in, but 
for me, this is a nice, clean case. And uh, I think a decent layout for what I need. Uh, I know a lot of people are particular about their layouts. I, I feel like I could adapt to most layouts, but um, yeah, I want to make a PCB that these are all become Cherry Max underneath instead of Maxi Switch Dome with sliders. So, because the case is solid, I mean, I, and I can't tell you how solid it's, it's nice. So I want to reuse this bad boy. I'm hoping there's steel plate in there. I'm hoping there's a PCB that's uh, screwed down to it. I get those dimensions. I start making layouts. And uh, yeah, so the next video, I, the next stream I'll do will be kind of doing a tear down on a couple of these maybe so we can see if my idea floats, like uh, what the PCB and the plate look like together underneath. And, and uh, so I can feel more confident about heading down this path. So. That's uh, it for now, and I'll, I'll be back uh, with another stream at some point to uh, continue my learnings. Everything's kind of new to me, as you, as you can tell, but um, that's where I'm headed. Let me get back to uh, this, and I can s uh, end the stream. Uh, hope you enjoy.